Hey everybody, welcome to the Mountain Deer Podcast. My name is Rodney Elmer. I'm here with Hollywood himself. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> Taylor. And uh, we're in the shop today. Um, one of the podcasts that I uh, really wanted to get into in depth and I think <clears throat> would be a great thing is to uh, talk about uh, what to do once you jumped a deer, right? You mm-hmm. know, one of the big parts of tracking and what really separates the men from the boys and when it comes to it is like being able to jump the deer once or twice and still be able to connect right and uh what to do when the deer is really really understands what's going on yep. and now it's become uh cross country long term <laughs> like this is going to be something right now one of the things that happens of course is uh education right you end up educating the buck like crazy mm-hmm and I'm sure uh, we've got a few stories here that'll help a little bit. And you and I haven't really had a lot of chances to to have, you know, jumped a deer and then followed and followed and followed and really poured it on. And, like, the deer knew we were coming, and it was like a, the, a wolf chase. Like, yeah. we, we've only had a couple, three or four experiences. On, with ones that. That we were, on ones that we were together, yeah. You've had, obviously, you've had. The right, I, I've ones. had a lot more, you know, just because I've, you know, I came over with Columbus, but, uh, you invented it. The, 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 the buck that the first buck that I wanted to talk about was, uh, the tour guide, right? Cause I hate that, deer. that was a deer where the burning passion. Yeah. We, we, we had a mediocre track on day one and we said, let's just go see, and maybe we can get them on film and the snow is going to melt. We had what, three inches, four inches of snow, three, four, two, yeah, three. We had, we had a um, small amount of snow, quite a bit. Yeah, we, we dropped down the hill and uh, went into the swamp. We did a little bit of filming. You guys have probably seen it, um, the video. Um, it was one of our, you know, I, I can't remember the year now. It was like two years ago, three years ago. Um, we dropped down into the woods. Uh, we called when we thought we were real close to the deer. The deer came, like, kind of just popped out on us and, and showed up at, at 30 yards behind some greenery there, and he was scraping the ground. You know, you could see his, we had snort wheezed at him, and grunted and he came right in and we didn't really spot him because he was behind this little clump of stuff and he came in from way behind that right at it so it that clump of stuff really covered us where we were and the deer pulled up and he, he starts scratching the ground um and we see that and now um then the wind changes just a whisker and we're talking and then you know we weren't sure we wanted to shoot him anyway and then he jumped out and turned out he was a pretty good sized deer oh, um the, nice. the the rack wasn't real big you know and, yeah. and i was kind of on the fence about it but anyway um the the deer the deer um between the hearing us and possibly smelling us you know any blue and he took off right and he 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 does these big slow you know to doom to doom to doom he didn't really run hard no he was just like yeah he he ran and he put on a show that's one of the things that happens sometimes uh sometimes too they run flat out like oh my god i'm out of here right that makes a difference too on how you should react and what you should do and that deer jumps off and he does a flagging thing most of the time with the flagging thing he's only going to go a short ways and then he's going to say like are you coming (laughs) right and if if we were another buck and of course we called him in he would be a little nervous and jump off a little bit and if we were another buck he'd he he puts he'd want to see us yeah and he put some distance between us but he also put some distance that he could see back over his trail between us right it's kind of like somebody somebody yelling at you from inside of a dark alley hey come in here you're gonna be like no yeah (laughs) right right. (laughs) you're gonna want to that's you know we had that same thing with uh grump buck when Mm -hmm. casey and i called him in he came down into the open and was in the open looking at us trying to get a visual you know, right. because we were grunting, we're snorting, we we're scraping, right? We're acting like a yeah, uh, acting like a buck, and he's gonna want to see that. He wants to, he wants to size you up. It's pretty rare that they'll go right into the bar with you, right? Yeah, they <laughs> you don't, know, you they scream don't at them from, into the junk, right? They won't go into the junk with like, you, like unless and, they're really like heads cocked and he yep. thinks he's the biggest, baddest thing around. You're and more likely to get. He's that. completely convinced, right? You know, yep. his hair standing up. He's he's doing the the Mr. The strut T. walk, yeah, like Mr. T, right? Yep. He he's doing the strut walk, and he he'll come right in. Ears are cocked, eyes are rolled back. I don't care. And when I get right. in here, you're gonna get it. It's like some of those moose 
Yeah, like Hunts sometimes when, you when see they're right up and they're just like this and they don't care. Yeah, you know they're they doing a cowboy whatever walk. it is. Yep. They're they're charging in to get you. Right. They're convinced. Now, of course, when he jumped off like that, um, and he he just hopped a ways and he was going across that open, and the way he ran, I like I instinctively knew he's going to stop right. So while he's running and he can't really hear or see me, I'm going to haul across to where i can see when he comes to a stop right. not only can i see him when he's in the open running right so it's say say you're in the woods you're tracking a buck and most of the time they lay down or you meet them on another edge of some kind in the woods right the edge of softwood and hardwood where they come together the edge of uh like open hardwoods and brushy part of the hardwoods right yeah any uh, hump or corner or rock pile, right? There's always some kind of little obstacle where you usually meet the deer. There's like a change in the woods when you meet up with the deer. When he runs, he'll make a change in the woods again. He'll take advantage of those edges, the, the, um, the brushier spot, the cover to cover him if he's really, really needs to go, or he'll take advantage of getting a view between you and him as quickly as possible, right? So some of them will yep. bust out and go across the big open woods and they'll just hammer. And a lot of times it'll, if there's a change in elevation uphill, he'll hammer uphill for a ways and stop on the hill. How many times a deer stop and look back, right? A million. So when you're coming down an edge, say you're coming down an edge of softwood and hardwood, and you're coming down that edge and you're expecting to see the deer and for some reason you don't or you do but he runs and now he jumps and if he's just loping and he lopes out into the hardwoods i can't wait to get my butt over to him right he runs and just kind of kangaroos nice and easy if i can run without him seeing me you know if i can stay in a shooting lane to yep. where he's headed i'm just going to take off running oh yeah I mean, we've if, we've done that in our videos a thousand times where like you know where you'll jump a deer he'll start going and then you know if he's coming across this way we'll run out here to get a spot to see because either when he's coming through the hardwoods if he slows down we might be able to get a shot or if he stops we'll be able to see him Yes. Right. So we want we want to get to a vantage point where we can see them is for as long as possible. Right. We want a big window. And so we keep our shooting lanes. We'll go to an open area because if he stops, he's going to get it. It's over. Yep. The other thing, too, is you get a better look at him. Right. Yep. To know what you're dealing with. Right. Because a lot of times they'll you'll see a deer go. And, you know, if we're on a track of a buck and it's the, really the only deer around and all of a sudden we see a deer go, sometimes we'll go too. Because mm -hmm. if they just kind of like hop off and all of a sudden there's a chun, 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 they go, huh? And they'll stop. Yeah. It's the same thing as like going, hey. Yeah. Right? Because it's really, as soon, if you just were standing in the woods and you took off running, the wind in your ears and the crunching of the leaves under your feet, if somebody went, uh, 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 and tried to grunt you to stop, you're not going to hear it. <laughs> no. You know what I mean? So that that's why you know, I, I was, you know, been in your footprints for a million years. And that was one of the things I picked up from you is like, they're not going to hear you grunt. So grunting them to try to get them to stop after they've started to take off to run, you're better off to just yell. Yeah, you're watching on videos go, all day long. Hey. Yeah. And then the deer goes, what the hell? Who, what? And then, Yeah, the guys will go, brah, brah, right at yeah. the top of there, you know, scream yeah. it right out, trying yeah. to get that thing to stop, yeah. right? Which you should. And it works. Yeah, and it works. Because you only need yeah. a couple seconds. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, you know, the, the buck just, when we first when we first hit him and he's not sure and he's like whoa and he just kind of jumps off and he runs over the little hill runs across an opening but there's softwoods where he's headed right there's a roof right i, I always call like spruces with a with nice branches and it's like dark underneath right that's a roof right so he runs across the opening doing the big jumps and then down the hill then he scoots in and he feels good as soon as he gets to the roof right, right it's like safer. i pulled into this little safer spot and i'm going to stop right here plus i'm not so easy to see now right it's mm -hmm. a little bit of cover for him and when he hits some cover he's more likely to go boom 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 stop and then look back. And then look back. Right. Yep. So that's your chance too of not only calling to him again, you know, if if he doesn't really know what's going on, it may hold him even for a few seconds and it'll give you time to get the gun up and, and take a look at him. 
and also to to get a better chance to see him say he's a mediocre buck and you're not sure if it's yeah. something you know and you want to see the horns you want to see what he what he's like you know that's where that little sprint and getting a look at him while he's running is good um there's been a whole bunch of times when there were other deer that i didn't know about and i happened down the track Mm. and he had met up with some other deer and they had all kind of come to a stop and here i am tracking him down the edge i get to this spot and i, I jump a deer and it runs well it turns out it was a doe right. here i am on a buck track it's and i just deer. see a deer boom ba -da 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 and I, i'm instantly thinking it's him i run over there real quick and i look and it's a doe ba boom ba boom off she goes now i instantly survey and oh here he is standing right here he's mm -hmm. watching me the whole time looking at her and he's over here that's, right that's one of the things that you run into and in, you know <laughs> when you're trying to make these snap judgments on the fly mm -hmm. because a lot of times right when the deer goes it's because you didn't see him yeah you know what i mean like if you saw him you know you none of this really applies because if he's standing there and you're like oh there he is yeah you got a good look you have, you have a chance but usually you've pulled the trigger most, or you've got him in the scope right, or somebody right. most but. of the time when you bust a deer it's you didn't see it and for the most part, you never really see the head. Yeah, at least not where we are. It's it's thick. The thing that stands out is the white, so their bellies or their tails, you know. And when they're going like the movement, mm -hmm. and you see the movement going through the brush or whatever, and you have to get to an open spot to see if that's your buck or not, you know, or a buck, you know, because it doesn't matter if you're on a track of a buck and there's another buck right there. Eh, eh, eh. Yeah, you know or I mean? or like if it's the buck at all. Sometimes right. it's other so, deer. So, but in doing that, you can also screw it up mm -hmm. because you and I were on another deer. On uh, it was. It wasn't the last day, but we, it was the last day of snow in the forecast for a little while. And it was, you know, just this kind of nice band of snow on top of the ridges, but down in the bottoms, there wasn't any. And we got on that buck and we were circling and going along and we ended up jumping him. Well, we busted him out of the bed. He was let bedded down right in the wide open hardwoods. He runs down to this little ravine goes on the other side of the ravine, parallels down along the brook, comes back up and stands in the spruces on the other end. You and I had tracked him across. We we're coming down the kind of the skid trail that was parallel to the brook. And it's like, oh, he's going to cross the brook and be on the other side. And both you and I and both were like, oh, here it is. Right. And you had already shot a deer by then. So yep. you were just my cameraman. Right. So we had, we're coming down the hill. We get right to the river and he's behind me a little bit higher up and we kind of just came down i was one step down and you can see the hmm, hmm and the eye and, right. then, and then the back leg yep right and i have nothing to shoot at so the deer ends up taking off and my instinct was get to get to a shooting lane right. so i and there's nowhere to go so i have to go down the brook and then up the other side Right. But yeah. that, that wasn't the right call. No, the right call would have been to stay on my side and up if and anything, up. go up, right. up and in. So that way I could keep this open. But what I wanted to do was I wanted to get to the other side because the other side's beauty and open, right. but you had to be down there in order to see it or you had to go across. Right. Right. And then you ended up seeing him go right, right. down through the hardwoods for a few jumps. And all you need is a few jumps. You know, yeah. that happens all the time, but yeah. you know, you, you end up making these snap judgments. Sometimes you're wrong. Sometimes it really pays off. Mm -hmm. It paid off when you and I were doing tie rod, when we were hunting that book right. and we jumped him and you went and moved out and then got to a spot and then, yep. right. It paid off to move. I didn't see him when he stopped right. because I had too much brush because yep. I'm filming. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's like, sometimes moving is great. Sometimes it's not, but it's one of those things that if you don't have a shot at all and you can't see from where you are. There's no real risk in moving because you've already busted the deer. Mm -hmm. Get to an open spot, get to a vantage point, see if you can get them to stop. Because then you, you don't have to spend the rest of the day trying to catch up to a deer that knows you're there. Part of the, the experience level of tracking deer is the, the fact that when you're, when you're new at it, you jump them, you tend to freeze. Right? Oh, yeah. You have this like it's not instinctive. Wired in. Get them, get them. Right. Yeah. You have this instinctive. Uh, Oh, I jumped. <laughs> and, and especially if you had a good look at it, right? You had a good look That's at me. it and you saw, mm, and you went, oh. And I did that a couple of times when I was young, right? And I had nobody teaching me, right? So I learned it the hard way, mm -hmm. right? I, I just went, oh. 
you know, some of the first times in Maine, right? <laughs> Especially when we, we first started going to Rangeley and, and I, I jumped this like whole group of deer. There was like eight of them, <laughs> but the one in the back was a wower and he jumped. Right. And all I saw was this womb like that. And I just went, Oh, and that thing is huge. It's like <laughs> the biggest deer I've ever seen, right? Yeah. And, yep. and I just did this. If I'd have taken off and run about 50, 60 yards on an angle, kind of parallel with them, I'd have had a shooting lane, and he was headed into some open. He was yeah. going down a bottom edge. I was above, and he's going down Sprucey Brook side, but he was still in the hardwoods, and all the deer, ding, 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 and they all, and of course, when there's multiple deer, they confuse each other. It's more noise, more movement, and they're not so sure. And yeah. when they run, they're like, well, what are you guys doing? Where are we going? Yeah, you can slower. see the difference. Slower. Yes, and it's more kangaroo. Mm -hmm. especially does tend to be kangaroo yep. show the way this is the way we're going as they run right yep. so like i didn't react i i just oh and, and they all went flying and and it was this and yeah. that's you know you dream about it you want it so bad mm -hmm. and you'll tend to freeze and like you shouldn't you should like okay where can i get that, a shooting that line comes stuff? down to two different things it was a painful lesson <laughs> it comes down to <laughs> oh yeah you it hurt i won't do that again it comes down to <laughs> Um, one, if you haven't seen that many buck mm -hmm. and you haven't had a chance to really look at them, any chance you see a deer, you want to watch and you want to see them, you know, it's different right. in new England than it is any other state. No, you yeah. don't really get that time, especially when you're tracking, it's either you see them standing there, you see them walking or you jump them. Mm -hmm. That's, that's really it. I mean, well, obviously the standing there and bedding thing is the same, you know, but as soon as you see them, it's gun up confirm good shot bang right, right. and you, you never get any time so that when you're new to it and you haven't seen a lot of bucks or you haven't seen a lot of deer you it goes boom and then you just start watching because it doesn't it doesn't occur to you to get your gun up you know because also the some of the other lessons that you've learned as a kid come in and those things are oh all right well well oh there it is well let's walk up and see if we can get another shot it's like yeah when you go hungry for a few seasons yeah. and you haven't gotten a deer, mm -hmm. it's like time to mm, <clears throat> get right. a little bit more. And it's if you're less focused on the track, you have more of a tendency to just watch them go. Mm -hmm. When you when you're feeling like this is crunch time and they're right here and you're like, mm, I should see them any second, and then a tail goes, you're more in the headspace to pick your gun up because you're just more on it. You're paying attention more. You're sharper. You know either. So yeah, if you have your gun on your back or if it's down to your side and you're not even ready for that, mm -hmm. you won't have the time to get, that's part of the non-experience on the track is if you can't tell they're close and you don't have that like, Ooh, that kind of like that feeling mm -hmm. you get when all of a sudden you go, it's right here somewhere. That feeling is like the wake up, get your stuff, get your gun up, be ready. You know, right. and that you do that as a novice hunter, a ton is you not you don't, you read the track as well. And you're not, you don't know the habits of deer. You don't know the kind of areas that they stop in. So you're just on the highway following this track and thinking that they're always a million miles ahead of you. And next thing you know, you're caught with your pants down because you're, you know, you're not paying attention. You're flip-flopping. And then there goes a tail and you're like, oh crap. And then you do that. Ah, oh. yeah. That same thing that, ah, oh. and then the deer yeah. goes and you're like, oh, well I ruined it. There goes another three seconds, right? That's right. Yeah. Right. Just the reaction time of, oh costs you the three seconds that it takes to that any big deer will give you most of the time it's not more than that mm -hmm. um like the other thing too uh especially if you're double teaming and we were double teaming on that deer that i saw and you didn't right coming down that mm -hmm. that, that little brook we're coming down this brook we already jumped the deer um he yep. did a kangaroo thing he he got a little bit of a look at us there was a ton of moose around right then and he mm -hmm. wasn't far from the moose he was like 150 yards from the moose down the hill just a little bit and we weren't expecting him to just lay on this shelf in the middle of the hardwoods yeah like um, wide open yeah and there was some uh, greenery above probably two or three hundred yards up the hill there was a bunch of spruce with a roof kind of thing and the moose were all around that and we had just got done filming a beautiful bull up there mm -hmm. that was tending a cow and yep. there was one other small bull and we were a little interested in, in filming them just a little bit and then and we left the deer track to do that because they were right there on and the it, track. right out in the open yeah it so, was good so we we filmed them a little bit and then said okay let's get back on the job so we get back to the deer track and we didn't like we got distracted number one yep. in our pace and paying attention from the moose 
Oh yeah. The moose will do that to you. Yeah. And then of course, when we get back on the track, um, when you first get on a track, you tend to be like a beagle. You just like, okay, let's hammer. Ding, 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 ding. And you don't pay quite the attention you would have been like, so when you first get on track, you'll, you'll tend to not really be looking for deer quite as well. You'll be more in the follow. Let's go. You want to expend some energy. And if the deer is right there, I hate hitting a deer instantly right out of the truck because yeah, like thing. in the first 200 yards you get out of the truck you go in the woods 200 yards and a damn thing's yeah, right there it's right? like that giant and it you dropped me off on and you're not year. you're not ready for it like your senses aren't ready you don't pay attention as much you're not on it you're not and, in the zone yet yes right yep. and that that better part of the zone we lost some of that watching the moose and whatnot and then we got back on Most it definitely. and the damn deer was right there <laughs> right so we no more and come over the little hump we turn out we look and oh and that looks like a bed down there Right. And a running track. <laughs> and a running track. And we get over to it, we're 30 yards, 40 yards from it. And yeah. oh, sure enough. And it's a good one. Yeah, it's it a good a, one. It's a good and, one. And, and he just, you know, kangaroos down the hill. That must and he have been, did some nice big kangaroos. That must kangaroo. have been like in like 2015 or so, because that would have been the first, that would have been my first 200. Yeah, yeah that, that, was a nice that was a really one. nice one. And we ended up jumping him. And of course, we didn't, we didn't get him on his first one. And then when he stopped, to give us a chance to go like to, so he could get a good either an eye full a good nose full of us he went down out of the snow and ended up down in the wet swale grass and in the mm -hmm. swamp and stuff and we yeah. we ended up losing him we spent i don't know how many hours we spent circling 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 and we couldn't pick him up you know but, time frame probably we we filmed the moose we walked a hundred yards uh, hit the bed hit the bed the deer kangaroos down the hill a little bit and we we probably took oh it was like a giant kind of curve. Yeah, it was like a little bit of a, a he did like a hook. You know, mm -hmm. he dropped down the hill doing nice big jumps, and then he slowed down to small jumps um, in a course of probably 300 yards. Yeah. Right, he just kind of just then, boing, 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 then and down, then down to down, a trot, boing, boing. and then just steady. Yeah, and then he did a little bit of a hook. When, he, when his speed slowed, he hooked and went across a brook up the other side, and there was a little roof over there, just mm -hmm. a small roof, and he went right up underneath and stopped right there. So when we saw that he had jumped off and he was taking pretty good sized leaps, um, there was probably, and we're in the wide open hardwoods and we're headed downhill and there's a view in the exposed. distance, but there's some cuts coming up too with a lot of uh, raspberry bushes, right? Uh, a lot of your pace will dis what help, help you determine your pace right after you first jump the deer is the terrain. If it's really super thick, um, you want to go slow and easy. Because they just might not can't jump. See they anything. might not go far. Yeah, it's not. It's not worth the risk. And if they do any kind of a hook, you're not so likely to notice. Right. Right. And they'll be standing off to one side just a little bit, and you come through that brush, and now they're going to straighten out and really head. That's probably also true. You in know, the thicker stuff. In the thick versus open, the running mm -hmm. to get a look. If it's thick, don't move. Yeah. Because. What are you going to do? Or smash if, through more of the brush to get up there. And if it's like an island of thick and it's open on the outside <laughs> and he oh, was go, in the thick with me, go to the edge. Now you run, go to the run edge, right to the edge, but you, you don't bust out in the if open. He's in the thick stuff. You're in the thick stuff. And that's just kind of the general woods you are. Yeah. You're well, yeah, you're there's no hurry. Run yeah. to go get a, you know, they're going to blow right through all that in 10 seconds. And you're not going to, there's no point in running through the woods, getting hurt tripping and landing on sticks and brush and stuff when it's thick woods if it's open or there's lanes and there's intervals of open close open close then you might as well get to a spot where you might have a chance of seeing something but mm -hmm. if it's thick you just right don't bother you're just gonna have to stay steady afterward i i think the terrain and the cover makes a bigger difference to everything like you in know, general in general that, it does that it, determines it where they're going to stop yeah to y your ability to move without being detected and and just pull up a little bit is good right mm -hmm. and sometimes um it depends on the brakes and and the terrain and where he's head and how fast he's going and what his mood is there's a few of them where you can just get right on it just just go ahead you don't you don't need to wait too long because he's really headed right you know just yeah. that i'm out of here and just he just plows and just most of the time they'll they'll beat through some real thick stuff bust out in the open and then run like down a skid trail across a cut get to they'll, the other side where yeah. more thick stuff starts and then stop yeah just 
plow, just boom, and big stuff. And just they, they'll go through some some tighter stuff, break out in the open, and get some distance, right? Especially when they're running really fast. They yeah. want they when you want hit them hard. The, yeah, you hit them real hard. They want some nice wide open. To, they want some distance. And a lot of times they'll pull uphill too, right? And that they know that gains them some time too. And they and they shoot up a three thousand footer, and you know three four minutes they've gone up a three thousand foot mountain when they're really hammering. Right. So there are those times like when he's really hammering and you you slammed him hard at 15 yards. Right. And he got a nose full. He he got a real good one. And he's like, wow, this guy's trying to kill me. You <laughs> shot at him. Right. Yeah. Right. You can tell when they've got this guy is trying to kill me when they go into that mode. That's it's another a whole, whole game. another game. And and like, I don't want to get behind. I don't want to give them too much time. I know that they need to take a break. They've got to slow down. If they don't stop, you're not going to see the time again. They, they give them themselves a break just because you're unable to cover the same amount of ground mm -hmm. like if you jump a deer and he starts going like a lot of guys like to wait and sometimes that is a good idea to give them a few minutes but if you hit them and they're running they can go three four hundred yards in a, less than a minute so easily mm -hmm. and it, you know it's going to take you 10 minutes just to get there yeah so if you start if you just go steady and nice and easy right behind them after you jump them they're going to get all the time they need mm-hmm now, one of the things about like the whole scenario of even like that first buck, like the tour guide, right? He, he kangaroos from us, stops at a couple hundred yards, puts a little bit of open so he can see, stops mm -hmm. underneath the roof, same as your other deer did, yep. right? He stopped underneath the roof. We called both those stops before they happened, right? Well, Just by looking at the terrain, especially with you and I on that buck going down the brook, right? Mm -hmm. We come down a little bit and I said to you, he's going to cross a brook and he's going to be on the other side and see that little yep. bit of roof down there. There was some spruces that, that had, you know, some branches and it was like a little bit of a roof down the side of the brook right there. And I said, he's going to be underneath that roof. Just keep an eye on the other side right there. I'm pointing right at the deer, right? You and I are going down the bank and oh, I'm yeah. saying right in there, he's going to be right oh, there. Yeah. It's textbook. Like I'm reading the terrain ahead thinking where, if I was this deer, where would I stop to look back? And right. if he is right there, I don't want to make a lot of movement when it starts to come into view. Right. I want to come into it nice and easy. Mm -hmm. Don't just bust into the open. No, because now he's definitely got a good eyeful and you're moving and he's confirming, yeah, he's after me. And then boom, and away he goes. We want him to stand there and say, hmm, is he really coming? I see a little movement. Right. And sometimes that calling might even hold him just a little bit. If you were grunting and he just jumped off real, real easy, I'd continue grunting a little bit. Just keep coming. If he didn't really know for sure what you are and you give him, and it might buy you an extra two or three seconds of right. him wanting to get a good view of yep. you. And if it allows you to get into a shooting lane and you're keeping the shooting lanes as you move, looking for the deer, you keep your shooting lanes open as much as you possibly can. Now, every now and then they'll come to a thick spot, a steep spot, some place where you're screwed. Yep. There's just nothing you can do. Yep. Crawl through that nice and easy, right? And you take your time. There's no hurry. And he might just be on the other side of that island, still in it with you, especially if it's a bigger island of cover, right? right. This bigger kind of like group of spruces or something. And he, he hits it at first and dives into it from the open, right? Say there's an island of spruce. You, you chase him over to it. So he, da doom, da doom, da doom, and he comes into it. Yep. And he'll slow down in the middle. And he'll stop and look back. And then if it's been a little while and you're not hurrying too much and now he relaxes, boom, 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 takes another, takes a, a few walking steps and then jump, but he jump again. He, he kind of like, he was going slow, but then he talked him in, himself into running, but, yep. but he's still in the cover, right? right. And he's, he's made that across, say, a, say it's a 200 yard chunk of cover, right? And he jumps into it and then slows down and goes to walking pretty steady. And he gets to the open over there. What's he going to do? He's going to stop. Imagine where he's going to stop in the upcoming terrain. And do your best to predict it. Yep. Now, the track, of course, will tell you what actually happened, right? Because that's the beauty of snow. Of course. It tells you the story. Now, as you start doing this more and more and you start jumping them and moving them a little bit, sometimes he'll come to spots where you're screwed. And sometimes, hopefully, you come to a spot where he's screwed. 
Well, yeah, there there has to be, you know, there has to be a chance where he's in a spot where you can see him. Yeah, and you've got to either see him or hear him. Period. You you have got to pick that bugger out, yep. right? So if he, you've got this two hundred yard chunk of of cover, and then it's open beyond that, he will probably stop on the other side of that. And the odds are good that he isn't going to go roaring out into that other open, especially if it hasn't been very long. And he's also not going to stop in the open and wait for you. Oh, yeah. No, no. No, and if he is in the open, it'll be on the edge of the open and when he gets thick again. Yeah, or the other far side or some high ground in the middle of the open, right? Them two bucks when we were chasing them and they were chasing each other. Yep. Um, in that video there, right, they they go up onto this hill to lay down. They didn't quite make it to the top of Maple that? Hill on Maple Hill out oh, there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? They're, they're out on the top of that. They're, they're up on the, this slashy, whippy, just garbage. It's Trash. it's like millions of inch and a half poles. And they're, they're, these two bucks are fighting and smashing each other. Blood and everywhere. Blood yeah. and they're chasing each other, but they didn't leave each other. And they went up on the hill and they bedded down about 30 yards apart in these woods and they just taking like a break from round took one a, yeah took a break from <laughs> from it right and then and we come along we're grunting we scare them and they bust through that and one jumps the other and the two of them go running up the hill they come to some skid trails that are like the best place to run in all those poles and to things move, yeah. and there's a fork in the skid trails and each deer takes one and the one we stick with that looked a little bit bigger and was bleeding, he runs up the hill and stops at a high spot, right, to look back. Now, he's been fighting this other buck. We come along. We're grunting. He ain't got a clue. He's not going to hang out because we're really close now. He probably saw our legs and stuff, you know, at 30 or 40 yards. Yeah. And, and he said, oh, there's something coming here. And, oh, I don't know what that is. And he just took off running. And he didn't want to get in a fight in that really super thick stuff. And yeah, we were acting be, pretty aggressive. He wanted to be in the open. Right. Because so, we, were, we were hoping that we could entice one of them to come back down into a fight again. Or come to so, us. So we're coming and going, <laughs> right, and we're snoring. We're, we're kind of stomping and just... <laughs> just kind of charging in there like this, you know, because maybe if we can get a buck to be like, all right, time to go again. And he comes back down out. He might be like threat walking and be a little less wary. Plus the cover was so thick. We didn't stand a chance. There was no shooting in that. We We could not shoot. And we had to have them come out to where we could see them. Yeah. Or we had to get them out. Right. Right. They they were in a spot where you could not do a thing about it. And like, you just got to get in there and get them up. Sometimes jumping them is really your only option. You have to go in there and you slam them out of the thick stuff. And when they get out into the open one, it freshens the track. And two, it gets them to where they want to stop and get a spot where they can see. So if you get them out of the thick stuff so they can see, that means so can you, you know, but it changes the game. It changes the game to, to track and hunt a deer that knows you're there. The element of surprise kills most of the bucks. If you can, if you can maintain as long as you can, him not knowing what you are and who you are and what's going on. He has to be, he has to be at least semi curious. Yep. If right. he's not, and he's like, uh-uh, then it's like you're not, you're not going to get close to him. He won't stop, and he may never uh, break out and open again, right? Mm-hmm. No. And when you get to to say jump number three, right? <laughs> you you have the nice soft jump in the beginning. He yep. just boom, 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 boom. He kangaroos a little bit. Then you 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 hit him one more time, and you couldn't quite get a shot, or you couldn't. It wasn't quite clear enough, or you didn't quite see him until he, he actually moved again. Mm-hmm. He was standing there. You're looking at him, but you didn't spot him. And then as you looked longer and longer, he just took off. Right? If you can jump them the first time, and they kangaroo, and you move fairly quick, and have a you know if even if it's just 30 yards to just keep a shooting lane and maybe a seeing lane, even if you can't shoot, maybe it's a seeing lane and you can tell what's going on. You try to take advantage of that and then let him jump awesome and just leave him alone. Right? Like, especially if the, if the, it's a real nice, soft, easy jump, then there's no real hurry, especially if it's thick. Like there's some place where you can't do a thing about it. Just leave him alone. He's got to calm down, right? And winding him up is not a good thing no. because now you're going to be all day, right? Especially like, and 
you, you may have to be pressing it at the end of the day because you're running out of daylight and you need right. to meet him again. That, right. That's a reason to shove him just a little bit, just just for the chance of maybe seeing him in the last little bit because mm-hmm. the clock is on. But if it's first thing in the morning, you got all day, don't be hitting him hard yeah. right off the bat. Leave and him alone. You're, whatever you were doing on the first and second jump stops working that's after right. a little while because you know, you're not, if you were grunting when you jumped him the first time, and then you come up grunting again. He's like, oh, here he is again. Plus, you're letting him know you're getting close. Mm-hmm. And you almost want to you wanna get up to him without him knowing that you're really closing the gap on the second jump. Because as soon as he's really aware that you're following him, you need to get in there without him spotting you. Mm-hmm. It's really important. Because on the first time you meet, it's not a big deal if he knows you're coming because he, you haven't scared him yet. Mm-hmm. And there hasn't been any... There hasn't been any negative association with grunting or whatever you're doing, like a tipper can or whatever. Not a big deal on the first time because he'll stand there and say, what's that? Mm-hmm. But as soon as it's like, oh, I don't like that, run away. And then you do it again. And he's like, oh, it's that again. Mm-hmm. Right. And it starts like, oh, and the more you jump him, you just have to, you have to let go of whatever you're doing beforehand because it's not going to work. He's, you're not going to grunt him back in after three jumps. That's not happening. No. He's not going to do that. No, no. There's no way. No. The other thing too is like, if you track him and you're just tracking him and you're not doing any calling and you just come along, right? And you do a nice, soft, easy jump and he just kangaroos off a little bit, that would be the time to call, mm-hmm. right? And that Sometimes would be the reserve, time to go easy. Reserve your calling for after. Yes, you can you reserve the calling for that first, in between the first and second jump, yep. right? So that the second jump doesn't happen. Or if it does, you hold him long enough so yep. that when you do come poking along, he's extra curious because yep. I heard a little something right. and there's some movement and it might hold him, right? I'm using the call to try and hold him where he is and let me get as close to him or into a shooting lane right. as possible. When you're tracking, it's it's not so much that we want to bring him in, right? It's not that. It's we want we want him to stand there long enough so we can get close and so we can see him. Mm-hmm. Most of the time, that's what you're doing. You're buying some you know, seconds. It's, it's different. When you're staying still, like either you're in a stand or you're in a blind or you're just kind of still hunting, calling is more to the purpose of trying to bring them in mm-hmm. because you're not moving. As soon as you start moving, you just want them to stay still. So you just yeah. have a chance. You only need, like, I think almost every hunter in New England could get it done in less than five seconds. If you can see yeah. him, yeah. like, it doesn't take anything. Right. You know, it doesn't take... You pick it up, confirm, yep, pow. Like it, that doesn't take long at all, but it's the spotting him or having to move or slide a little bit because there's always something in the way. Yep. <laughs> there's always like a stick or something in the way, and you might have to change your vantage point a little bit, and you need that not to freak him out. Mm-hmm. They need to be curious enough to stand there and use the calling right when it's like, when they're th- when you can kind of see they're, mm, and they're getting ready to go, nah. they go, huh? And it's like, ha, ah, okay, now you right. give an extra second, done Mm -hmm. and your movement after you call might not be as scary if all of a sudden there's something silent out there and then it moves quick it's like oh you know right especially deer that get pestered a lot Mm -hmm. like by coyotes they get pestered by other deer a lot hunters other hunters lots of high pressure deer those ones those ones are finicky and you have to be really careful there also comes a point where um You've you've gone the second time now, right? On the tour guide, right? We're we're going after him. Mm-hmm. We we do the first soft easy. We do the second one, and the second one's not so easy because no. he's standing there, and I'm eyeballing him, and he's eyeballing me, and then he turns and he goes, and I can't see the head real good, but I can see the body beautiful, you know. And I was still yeah, and I put the gun back down, and away they go, right? And then we get together you and i and we look at the footage and geez he's a pretty nice deer yeah, like maybe wow. we ought to uh yeah, we yeah probably go shoot let's, him. let's go see you know and let's just keep chasing right so now in the first move was he went a couple hundred yards not even 150 yeah it was 40 it wasn't 30. That, it wasn't that far it was just it was kind of down this hill and then down in towards a little embankment up on the other side. And it's where where he is is a slashy, smashed up woods really nightmare. They in went garbage. in and they, it's yeah. trash. They freaking just, mm-hmm. it's these strip cuts where they just drove on everything. And it's, well, the open was, kind of, was kind of garbage. 
you know, yeah. to walk. And then there was all these strip cuts of, of cover in where between they, where them Where they all. left the trees and that's nice. Yes. And, and he was breaking through the strip cuts sideways, right? You had all kinds of strip cuts and he's going perpendicular to them and yeah. he's going into the woods and then busting out in the open and then back into the woods and busting out in the open. And he's crossing all of these. And that next move was what? 400 yards, 500 yards. Yeah. It was, he it went was, a solid 500 it was, it yards. Was a ways, if not a little more, he and went he, a long ways. He pulled uphill significantly and went over a brook and then pulled up hill some and stopped yeah. and got it in was by the moose yeah he got into some moose just a little bit and he kind of just started to go by him and then pulled off to the side to and stop. said let's use the moose's ears and see what happens yeah. right so we they come, do that all the time freaking deer yeah they'll they'll Run use right the other the animals as an extra radar right which I do myself, right? Because it falls to the moose go, ah, and they get scattered. He knows yeah, that you're Yeah, he doesn't him. even have to see us because mm -hmm. the moose will see us, and he'll get the signal, and away they'll go. Freaking deer. Right? So we come up through there nice and easy. We're going slow. Um, it's been three, 400 yards, and we're now looking for him to stop someplace. But it's more difficult because we can't see the upcoming breaks because we're going perpendicular to all these strip cuts. And we just can't see firing out up ahead we can't see the canopy of the trees we can't we, we can only guess that there's more strips but the strips actually turned and went parallel with the, the direction we were going now so now we're hoping he gets in one of those runs up stops at the end of one of those and there's some humps in it so as we come over the humps every time we come around a corner we're looking for the bugger right oh, yeah you go easy now as as we're we're covering this 400 yards or so going towards it i'm always looking at the pace of his jumping walking and how fast he's going and it, i want to notice the second he starts to slow down at all right. when when the distance in between all his tracks start shrinking then we got to start going more easy more mm -hmm. easy right and and even if i'm in the back and when you were little and you're in the front you're bird dogging just follow the deer right yep. but i'm saying leave me something to look at because right. don't, i don't want to trample it all don't trample all of his tracks because i want to see especially when he goes from a um, like a canter he goes from a gallop down to a canter and then he goes from a canter down to a pretty fast paced walk right like a trot yeah he's almost trotting but he's really a fast paced walk i want to see Every time he starts slowing down, now I've got to slow down, right? Because now I, I've gotten back to the speed and distance from when he was really hammering. If I just sat way back there and waited forever, now I'm forever, that half hour, I'm, I'm a half hour behind him. And if he never stops, that half hour has now made it impossible for me to ever get near him again and, in a timely manner. And you also don't know that until later in the day. Yes. Which yep. like we don't we don't typically wait too long after jumping them. It's like mm. and it's rare that we rebump them cuz we came on them too fast. Yeah. And especially early in November you, you, when when yeah. you really got them running running and now they're really hammering and they're they're not really does there's nothing else it's just you and him they, they will go a long ways. Right. And then so waiting doesn't do you any good. Well, it, even if he he calms down, right? Which is the, the goal of waiting is to have him calm down. Mm -hmm. Even if he calms down, he goes back to being a buck. Goes back to walking. <laughs> and he starts, he hits a deer's track and he turns down it and he goes to looking for does. And now he's calmed down, but he has not stopped, right? Or, and you need them to or stop. if he does stop while he's stopped, if you're stopped, and then when he goes back to walking, you go back to walking. You yeah, keep you're, that, you're way you keep behind. that distance in between you and he has to change direction. He has to stop. He has to find something he's interested in or he has to bed down or cover cur, circle back over his track. Right. Otherwise Maybe. you never close in on them nope. because they walk. And if you're walking and they're walking, you're never going to meet him. You're not going to catch him. Your and, two legs are not good. And even enough. if you did, sometimes they do that. Jay, mm -hmm. they do a hook. And while you're that far behind and you come up on him and he does a hook and now he's relaxed and he happens to, next thing you know, he's in your track. Mm -hmm. How many times you've been tracking and the buck you're tracking is walking in your tracks. The penalty is death. My <laughs> God. I just like, I, that, I hate that. I hate that. <laughs> and a lot of that can be caused, especially because you're Take so far time. behind. We it. did that on, um, uh, 
What did we name that buck? What was the tune-up game buck? Oh yeah. What did we name him? Yeah. Paul Crew. Oh, Paul Crew. Yeah. Paul Crew. Yeah. From Long we named Shared. that buck Paul Crew. Right? Uh, <laughs> and that was the same thing. He ended up walking on our tracks. I think it was like, what, was it twice? Yes. And it was like, I'm just, I don't even care if this is spike corn. I'm going to shoot him just for doing that <laughs> two times in a row. Yeah, he was a little tune-up it, game. It was because the the kinds of woods we were in and the pace he was at, he was going really slow, and he was just kind of circling and meandering. So it was like we had to go slow because we could just come up and he could be coming in any direction at any time because there was just this like quarter mile by quarter mile patch of woods and he was just stamping it all into the ground and he didn't want to go anywhere yeah. and we came that. along and he's like he even made a circle and came back onto his own track with us on it and he's like who are these guys and then he starts sniffing up our track we come back to where he started tracking us again and then he peels off we start tracking him he circles back and then is tracking us tracking him tracking us tracking him <laughs> And it was like, and then he pulled off to the side and stood there into the thick stuff and yep. waited because now he's like, all right, they're in here with me. He gets off and waits. We come along and he smashes through the thick stuff because it was like a there was this big long kind of strip of like spruce that you could hardly push through, and he weaseled his way in there. And he it's a smaller younger buck. He was like two. Yep. He's a two year old, so he's just yep. this little small thing. And he's in there kind of snuggled up standing there and we pull up to and that we, and we're spot. walking down this strip at him and then he blows to the other side and yeah but like, we were 15 yards yeah i mean we knew like oh he, he pulled in that real was practically spot. steam yeah. coming off the track <laughs> and and i said i said to you like oh he's right that thing oh, is yeah. right here yeah. and and we're just creeping like we're you know in buildings right just just land we're looking down the yeah. aisle we're like expecting you're clearing to see each him. room kind of like thing. we're gonna see him at 10 yep. feet 15 feet like yep. he's right here and yep. we're being super quiet and oh, right here bang oh, and he yeah. smashes out through the stuff <laughs> and what do i do bang i smash right through the stuff because it's open on the other side yeah. right and there's nothing but the else. amount of time it takes for him to go through and run out into the next thick strip and to yeah. go through those two walls is the amount of time it takes for you to go through one. So right. he's already 200 yards at the other side. And we're like trying to swim through this spruce to get out on the other side. It's like there was no chance. In the time it would take he's me so to run thin. from here to the door. Yeah, he's he had gone, already gone 100, he's gone 100 yards. yards. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like not happening. You know, they're doing like 15 foot bounds through stuff that you can't even push through. But I'm going to try. Yeah, I mean, you, what do you have? Nothing to lose. You got nothing to lose. Plus, Smash and grab. Plus, he might through. go, what the hell? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Jesus. Yep. Oh, my God, this guy's crazy. <laughs> Hoping to shock him just a little yeah. bit. Yeah, <laughs> and then that, it was, he ended up starting to go find other deer and work down tracks yeah. and, and just started smashing and just trying to get us off because you know we had so many interactions and he got such a good nose phone. He saw us point blank. So he was like, nope. There was no chance of curiosity after that. Mm -mm. You weren't going to call him in. You weren't going to do any of that stuff. You had to get him to calm down, which he was going to do after he got some space. Mm -hmm. So he ended up going quite a ways and then stopping a few times and then started walking and then just got right on the path and started traveling because he's like, well, my spot's ruined. Let's might as, well, might as well go for a walk. Another huge point is when you're tracking a buck and, and say uh, you get to the point where you jumped him, what was going on before you jumped him, what he was doing is very important. Like if he was eating and he hasn't had time to chew his cut because he I didn't lay down, I right? Love that. that will help determine, you know, how fast you're going to get after him. Yep. There are some bucks that uh, spent a lot of time rutting uh, two, three days of really going crazy. And then they got behind on their eating. And now, like, I just got to eat. Gotta put the we'll we'll see on. a lot of moose do that, too, where they're breeding like crazy. And then all of a sudden, one bull will just say, that's it. I've got to eat. And stand there on the side of the road, <laughs> just eating and not even care that there's three trucks watching him because he's yep. so hungry, right? Yep. If you've got a buck that has been hungry and he's just pounding the food, he's eating and eating and eating, especially if he's by himself. Do not let him lay down. Yo, yeah, for the you rest stay, of the day. You, you know, say you jumped that, him and he was still eating, right? He was him. still eating and he never got a chance to lay down. Yep. Now you can just kind of stick with him and you don't have to go quite so fast. Mm -hmm. And you can just keep coming because you know he'll go a ways and lay down, go a ways and lay down. Because he has ways. to. And he wants to. He really Undulate. wants to. You have to. If he's done a whole bunch of feeding and then he bedded down and he was there for a long time. It's over. And now <laughs> you got him up. You he know, you rested get, and fed. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yes, and now he's going. Say it's a little <laughs> earlier in the season, you know, like the first half of November, mm-hmm. right? And and he's he had a chance to eat good. He's had a chance to lay there good, and you get him up. Now, and especially after the second jump, now he's really going to turn the afterburner on. He's yeah. going to put some distance between yeah. you. And then once he gets way up there on the mountain or where he gets way away from you a good distance, puts a big barrier between you an and hour. him. Yeah, and it's been an hour or whatever for you to try and catch up. He's had a chance to chill. Now he'll go back to being a buck. And he'll be mm-hmm. looking for does. He'll he'll start sniffing and crosswind in the mountain, looking for stuff. And your he'll only, just go back to being himself. Your only hope is for him to find something else to do other than worry about you. Yeah, he has to find something else to do after you jump him. And if, he especially has to if stop. You jump him like if you're going to meet him, he has to stop or yep. circle back on his own track somehow. Yep. Right? You, yep. You've got to come back and come back near him somehow. And you're you're just trying to shorten the distance to being near the deer. And you want to be hunting near him. And I hate it when they've got a plenty of chance to get away from me. They've now, they burned a second or a third time. And now they go to being a buck and they never stop for the rest of the day because he was rested. You know, he had something to eat. He, he met me in the morning. I bust him once or twice. Now he's way off someplace and yep. he goes to being a buck and I've got to hope and pray, find something. And of course, in the early part of November, he's not going to find anything unless it's another buck. Mm-hmm. which would be great because now we got two bucks right and they could stop and beat on each other yes or even if he just gets behind him and then starts laying down sign you know a lot of times when it's pre-rut yep. a buck will will just go cross country and he'll hit some other deer he'll check them out and when he finds another buck and especially one he doesn't like yep. he'll run down that he'll go a short ways on it and then lay down some sign Yep. Making scrapes and rubs eats up time. So that's one of the yes. things that we like to see Close the is when, when we're following a track, if he's any time that he eats, any time that he beds, any time that he makes a scrape or makes a rub or is checking beds is time you're gaining on him, right? Because I always kind of imagine it that he and I are walking at the same pace. I always try to think of that. And anytime I come up and I'm like, oh, I just gained five minutes. Yep. Right. So if I hop right back on the track right then and I start making progress and just keep scanning and keep looking, anytime he stops is, oh, there's another five minutes. Oh, there's 10 minutes. Oh, there's 30 seconds. Right. And then I will eventually catch him, even if we stay at the same pace, because I didn't stop and stand there for five minutes. So now you like he did. You made a little jump and now you're going to get him. I don't want to lose that. And you you don't want to lose that time. So you have to, but of course, anytime you run into a spot where he stopped, you also have to stop for a little bit because he might, he might be there still. Oh yeah. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. And you can only go as fast as you can scan the woods. If it's really thick, you have to go slow. If it's really open, you also kind of have to go slow too. But I also look at more places. I'm using the, the best possible measurement for me. And when I'm in that, do I go fast? Do I go slow? Is he right here? or Is he not right here? It's pacing is, is the pacing in between the steps, yep. how big his stride is. And as soon as his stride starts really shortening up and mm-hmm. he's taking little small steps and he's, he's doing, he's this, doing a little snaking through yep, the woods. Yep. Now we got to go easy. If, if he's holding a line and he's taking pretty decent steps, he's taking the easiest possible path through those woods, you know, to go right along and just to kind of, you know, most of the time you'll, find a a lot of especially where we are there's so many roads that the bucks parallel the roads a lot Mm -hmm. they'll stay you know just off to the side of the road a quarter mile or less sometimes and and they'll just kind of hook the road and just go um as i'm going along if he's just going cross country and he's holding a line and he's just kind of keeping a steady pace and holding a line i'm going to move right along as soon as he gets into some cover and he really hits the brakes ooh, now i gotta go easy yeah. right and you want to see those transitions coming ahead of time which as is much where as the you learning can. how to read the woods helps you predict what his pace is going to do before you see the change in the tracks mm-hmm. because one of the things you won't like we saw this on grunt book Every big buck hunter will tell you this, that as soon as you, they come up to a four-way stop and you see that, and then they turn, it's like, careful. crap. Right? Be careful. Because yep. he could be right here, right? All of a sudden, that's just, you're on the highway and you go, whoa, and get off the exit, Yeah. right? Who knows how far they're going to go after You do the, the same thing, right? Oh, yeah. You're walking through the woods and you stop and you make a realization yeah. of, I'd like to sit down. Or I'd like to take a dump. Or that looks you, good. I want to yeah, eat that. Right. right. And now, because 
all of a sudden something changed and you want to see that change coming ahead of time. You want to look down the track as mm -hmm. far as you can. You want to look through the woods and look at the terrain beyond the trees as far as you can because you can say, oh, here's a ridge coming and it's going to do this and this is the shape of that. Oh, we're going up that thing or we're going to go parallel down this brook and then go up to that ledge. We're looking for a flat spot. You know, that's that. If you can eliminate the jump, you don't have to worry about any of this, <laughs> right. The, right? The hitting them before you jump them, right? You want to get them before you jump them. Oh yeah. That just, that is your, your best chance is the first time you meet, but there are things you can do every time you meet mm -hmm. and there are things you kind of have to do. If you had to put a percentage to like, say I jumped a deer 12 times in one day. Right. Oh, like what, what percentage, the you know, odds of you getting him decrease yes. every time you jump him? Yeah. It's, it's exponential. <laughs> you know, yeah. The you more know. you jump him, the worse your odds get. <laughs> right. Right. But also too, there's a wave, right? Mm -hmm. There is a wave to it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the wave will be, part of it will be terrain and part of it will be time. Time. Mostly. Time is quite a bit. And, and also too, uh, like how far you've traveled. Right. And a lot of times it's uh, like a first jump and 100 yards or less, 200 or less. That be that that has a lot to do with why they ran. Mm -hmm. If it's just some movement and then they hopped off or if your wind came down and then they smelled you. And it also has to do with how big and experienced this deer is. Mm -hmm. like most of the time the size determines like age and stuff a lot, but multiple deer will stuff them a little bit. You yeah. know, if there's multiple, they'll keep each other going and they'll the, go a little farther. It's almost like sometimes. the context of the situation depends, changes like how they're going to run and how that jump's going to really affect them. You know, if and, you, and of course it's variable, right? It's always it's, variable, <laughs> you know, pretty much, pretty much they're going to stop. That first jump, it's not over. It, the first jump is never the end. Mm -hmm. It's almost never the end because no. they're like, what really happened, right? Because if they were in that area, they were there for a reason. They don't mm -hmm. really want to leave. Otherwise, we, you would have already passed through that, you know? Yeah. Um, sometimes it's that <laughs> they were just slow and you came along and just got on them early and then they just happened to slow up and then you hit them, mm -hmm. you know? But a lot of guys bail when they jump a deer. Don't bail on the first jump. Don't ever bail on the first jump because if it's a good buck and you're tracking him and you want this one, go get him. 30% of just the ones him. I've shot were you know, after, after the first, the first jump. jump. Oh yeah. Because you know, you're, you're checking the woods, it's thick and all of a sudden they jump and now you know, it's fresh. And yeah. now it tells you you're paying. Now you're actually paying attention because you just saw a deer. Your alertness is turned up too. Yep. Your focus, yep. you're ready to roll, <clears throat> you know? And now there's all these things you can do when you add um this the second jump um and now they're really headed third jump on uh, third, third, jump, third jump it is, drops right off a lot oh yeah third jump it's it's really hard how how many times did we jump two step the first day oh boy five six, to seven somewhere six, in there seven. yeah it was probably closer to the seven thing. Yeah. That was a really specific thing. You know, we, in two days, we hit him 10 times, I think. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was mostly due to the fact that he was wounded. Mm -hmm. You know, he had been hit. I know you guys are familiar with that deer, but he had, he had been hit and he really didn't want to leave the thick stuff. And he didn't like run it downhill. And he, Right, his his legs hurting him. It was his and, front leg. Right, yeah. and he's just not feeling right. So he's extra paranoid because he's injured, and we keep hitting him, and he is not comfortable leaving the thick stuff. So we are basically circling around in this tight woods, and you can't see very far. You have to get right on top of a deer that's wounded, that's not moving, that knows you're coming. Yeah, that thing is like impossible. And he will not leave cover. He will not leave cover. And he will getting, now, but not that first year. It was right tough to get him hit. out of that really garbage. Oh, yeah. He would not. He did not want to leave the garbage, yep. and he would just stay in it. And he would mm -hmm. run from one section of garbage to the next worst section of garbage. He knew well, you about. you and Jimmy had the same thing on Mister Rogers. Yes. If a deer is not leaving the garbage, you need to jump him. Yeah, you're you just going to have to keep busting have, him. You have to keep slamming him to get him out because you need a chance to see him. And if you're in woods where you can't see 15 yards, you're not going to get that deer. No. And especially after he knows you're coming, if it's quiet and like that, like it snowed, it's starting to warm up drippy woods and all that, 
you're not going to get him. You're not. And even the super creepy crawly stuff, I, I was, it was perfect conditions. It was wet, heavy snow that was continuing to fall. Mm-hmm. I called it because he kept doing the same thing. He'd do a hook, stop, and then go back in another hook the opposite way and then lay down. Yep. And he did that like three or four or five times in a row um, over the course of the first day. And then when we get on him and we chase him all day or half a day, and now he pulls back into the, the thick stuff and he feels really good. And he pulled another one of those stunts and I saw it ahead of time. Mm-hmm. And I said, Ooh, he's going to be on this bank right here. And I didn't even bother finishing the track. I just said, he's right here and right pulled up. around the corner and up. And I'm going like that. That thing was here to the wall from me. He was standing right there. And, and I stepped out into that aisle and I went like that and boom, and his butt come right out of that, boom, just like that, right out of that aisle. He was here, the refrigerator from me, right yep. in that garbage, right? Mm-hmm. Now, if he had happened to be chewing his cud or looking down at the ground or if he was doing anything different. It had been over. Because uh, he just got up. Mm-hmm. I was, he had got up and walked 15, 20 feet and I'm standing in his bed and he's 15, 20 feet from me. I mean, that's thick woods, right? And he's literally right there. And I'm, and I'm thinking, I need to film this bed, and the deer is right here because this is so <laughs> good, right? And I should just get him right here. I, I was feeling really good, mm-hmm. and I filmed that a little bit. Good and vibes. then I leaned out in the aisle, and he's here in the refrigerator. <laughs> Boom! And, 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 of course, he was on it. I don't like him that close because <laughs> they <laughs> freak <laughs> And he came unleashed. At 10, 15, 12 yards, they freak when you step on. They do not like that. And, of course, what happens? He busts out of that garbage. Mm-hmm. And he broke out into the open and said, I'm out of here, right? Because it was so close. Yes. He just turned the afterburner on. And, of course, when the afterburner is on, he can't run through the super thick stuff and stick with it because yep. you can't keep up that right, speed. Right. You're going too fast. You're running to a tree. And he needed the distance. I was so close. Right? <laughs> scared him. <laughs> scared him good. Right? So he goes busting. It just, wham, wham, we're going across country. Yep. And then, of course, where does he go? Back into some more garbage. You yep. know? Um, and it was nice enough garbage so that we could swing it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you could work it. It's thank God Jimmy stuck with it, right? Yeah. And he just crawled in and, and right around, and we just, boom, and, and he come right to me, and he, he didn't didn't have a prayer, really, the way well, that worked the out. Reason, the reason why you were able to get that deer, and that's actually right. <clears throat> right behind you. Right here. He's not finished, but yep. he's drying still. But So that buck right there is the one that he was talking about, and the reason why you guys could get him was one because after jumping him his behavior changed and it makes him predictable Mm -hmm. and if you are hitting him and he keeps hooking and keeps hooking and hooking you can say well he's gonna go up here and he's gonna do this and he's gonna wait to see me because he's gonna be like what in the heck is going on Mm -hmm. and you say well if somebody else can get on the track and then i can swing it Mm -hmm. you know and i can parallel them and work out if he's a deer that hooks and you're paralleling Somebody hits him and he goes out like this or goes out like this. Yep. You're going to be able to see. It's it's like chess, you know. And and at that point, sometimes you know, leaving the track a little bit, mm-hmm. you know, predict the terrain, leave the track a little bit, and just do a hook yourself. You know, swing out here so it's it's a little bit of a different advantage, right? And say, I know he's going to do a hook, and he's probably right across here. There's an opening, and it's good chance he's right there. But if I swing out here and he can't smell me, and I come in from over here, now the danger comes from a way you may not be expecting. Right. And if you're taking your time, and he says, well, I guess it's okay, and he goes back to doing his thing, oh, you're right into him, mm-hmm. right? So it's it, but Swinging the track is risky. Because you lose all of the information, the pace especially. You just go, you lose and you're your letting pace. go of it. And now, yep. you, now it's a hunch. You're going on a hundred percent of a hunch. It's super risky. Mm-hmm. Super risky. Well, every but now it, and then, it, it can pays pay off. off. Yep. It can totally pay off. It can, or it can put you another hour behind, <laughs> or right? more. Yes, because if he goes like this and then goes and goes that way and just keeps hammering, mm-hmm. and you go out here and hook, and then you're like, huh, huh, I don't see him, and then you go, ugh. You just wasted an hour going slow through the brush looking when you could have just hit the 90 and went with him. Yeah. But. Or when you leave the track and you start your hook and he happens to just turn and go over your track. 
right? He goes behind you and then it, you have to go all the way back around the circle. And it's like, where'd he go? I just circled the whole thing. He must be right here. Meanwhile, oh. you've spread your scent around the entire circle. Say it's two, 300 yards, right? And you do this. Meanwhile, he's gone boom, here. Over your track and on now the other side. Uh, back to another hour and a half behind. <laughs> <laughs> and now um, later on in the season, when they've got the feed bag on, and they're tired, and they're slower, and it's colder, and the snow is a little deeper. Now it's they're sometimes a little more predictable, and that that again changes how far he's likely to run when he needs to get away from you. Yep. You know their behavior and what's going on is going to number one depend on terrain. The terrain is a big part of my pace and speed. Their pace and speed I want to match. Mm -hmm. As soon as they slow down, I want to match that. Right. If he's going easy, I'm going easy, right? It's if he turns it on, I'm turning it on. Um, and I'm trying to predict when the slowdowns will come before they happen. So yes. that, And also, too, I'm seeing how right I was all the time. Right. I think he's going to go this way, and I think he's going to do this. And then we go a little ways, and sure enough, that's what he does. Or Practice he, or your, he does it your and predictions. You go, hmm, and you learn something about this deer. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Always hooks to the left. Yep. Right? If you can, you get, you get him on the first go. You want to get him when mm -hmm. he doesn't know you're coming because that's the best chance. Yep. So a lot of times, especially when you start getting into the season, the later you go into the season, the less we kind of typically call just because they don't really have an interest in other bucks like muzzleloader and stuff. You just dead quiet, mm -hmm. dead quiet, sneak right up on them. They're tired. They got the feedback on. They're bedded. They're not really hammering like they were. And now you have to go slow all the time because they'll just mm, boom and then lay right down on their track. Yep. It'll be mid walk, lay down, hang out. In the main part of the rut, like there are no rules. It could like, just the whole thing could uh, just be easy yep. or it could be just an absolute nightmare mm -hmm. of other deer, other bucks, other tracks, other hunters. And like, they're going uh, crazy. Yep. So it's like Yep. There's no rules. There's like no most rules. of the rules don't apply when it comes to the main part of the rut. They they are just doing things, especially chase phase. Things are crazy. Yep. And and then actual breeding phase, sometimes things slow right down. The does don't go very far. Well, every, every doe every, everybody's in the buckets, shacked up. Yep. They're then, all together and they're not don't seem to be doing anything. You like, get that you get that on the on the third like the well, not really a third. It's probably after Thanksgiving, fresh snow. You look around and there are no deer tracks. You're like, where the hell did all the deer go? It was crazy there. Mm -hmm. It's because they're all really in heat. Everybody's shacked up, and now they're not moving. Not moving as much. They're all been pressured they're, for They're a just month. staying in these little circles, and you're checking all your usual places, going around all of them, looking mm -hmm. for tracks, and you're like, there aren't any tracks. And, it's like, and well, then all of a sudden, you come into boom. seven of them, right? And then and they, they just go, yeah. they f and you got deer going everywhere. Right, and then yeah. the following day, there's so many tracks, you can't cipher none of them out because there's just deer everywhere. You get snow during the day. And then you get a crisp cold night mm -hmm. where it's just stars. It's yep. nothing but deer tracks in the morning and it's crunch. Now, when it comes to an absolute freak out, right? The deer just absolutely freaks and goes cross country. He's just headed, headed. Um, and, and especially if you just keep coming steady, I just keep coming steady. You know, when they really freak, freak, and they just like, here's some river games, here's some mountains, here's some ledge, here's this, here's that. I'm trying to just, throw you. Yeah, I'm just leaving. And if I, if I have the energy and I feel like giving it to them, you know, we're going to go for a walk today, right? You and me, we're going to go. Yep. I'll just start walking steady and I'll just keep coming steady all the time. I'll never let up. Don't I'm slow just down. trying to get him to a spot where he's screwed. And I'm looking for the bugger and I just keep coming, just keep coming, 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 coming all the time. <laughs> and like if you, and, and of course I'm looking. Right, every time I come around the corner. Right, it's not and, like you're not paying attention. Yeah, I'm paying attention. And every time I come around the corner or over something, I'm always, come on, right here someplace. I'm going to see him. And I'll, I'll try and just do my best to see him and get a shot, right? And if I'm given the first good opportunity that I'm given, I'm shooting. Yeah. Like, this is the deer I want. I'm going to shoot first first good chance I get. It's coming, right? And, and then get a hole in them and just like we're going to do this just keep coming so when it really comes down to the turn and burn right they they turn the, the turn and burn and they they just head right there's certain things that they're going to do number one they're going to try and put as much distance between you as they can and get to a well in order to get to yeah yes but it depends on depends on how hard they're running 
If they go boom and take yeah. right off. If they're doing the turn and burn. They're like, going to be really, a while. Yeah, gonna afterburners while. on yep. and they go, yep. right? They're going to put some distance between you and a fair amount of cover. Most of the time, they like to play some water games of some kind. That's pretty normal if they have that. If there's a brook, they'll go on the other side of it. Yeah, a river, right? They'll use a big river to help wash you off. Um, they'll also use uh, chunks of land that they know, like, posters right no one ever chases them through this piece of property right here uh they'll use roads That's huge posters is huge blacktop roads is real common where there's lots of traffic i'm sure it helps them get rid of coyotes right when they run oh, yeah. across the blacktop because hopefully he'll meet a car <laughs> and that'll screw him up and i'll gain a couple <laughs> hundred yards hit. that's right right i've seen him do it i've seen yeah. him do it i watch a coyote chase a deer right across the road and a deer turn or even rabbits how many times have we seen a rabbit in the road and then there's a fisher right on it oh yeah right and even the rabbit is using the cars to help get rid of the fisher Mm -hmm. right um they'll bring you to other animals of some kind you know a lot of big buck have brought me to groups of does or other deer they're running along trying to get away from me and they're going and going and all of a sudden their nose goes and they do a 90 degrees right or turn part way and and then they elbow off and i'm like hmm why did all of a sudden he just change direction he's been holding this you know general course for a half a mile and then all of a sudden he did a hook and he's still running and he goes and goes and w the cover changes. And then I look up and there's a deer there. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, oh boy. And I start looking and they're all bald and there's six of them. And I'm like, what's the deal? And I don't see the buck anywhere. And I go a little farther and I sneak right into them and they all go running off. And he came to them, walked through them, got on the other side of them and took off running. Yeah. And I Freaking come along deer. and I scatter all them deer. Now I'm way behind him. I'm a good half hour behind him. He's running hard for a long, we've been a mile or more, a mile and a half. And of course it takes me a long time to cover that mile and a half. Meanwhile, he's just shot across it, came to this group, shot through them. And even if he stops way out past them a ways and just watches them and he sees them book and now he takes Ooh. off running, Yep. right? He, I still gained on him a little bit, but this one didn't. No, he, he, <laughs> he had, he's still headed, right? <laughs> so he's hoping that you turn off onto those other deer and you leave him alone, right? right. Because, because you've been past he doesn't know. We want his antlers. Elevation. <laughs> right. Right. You're bigger and there's more meat and tastier and we want you. <laughs> and I course, cannot be swayed. He applies the mountain to you. He'll mm -hmm. make you climb a 3,000 footer. Go and then, down a cliff. Yeah. Turn around the side of the 3,000 footer and back up again. Um, yeah, take funny. you down out of the snow. Right. That's another thing. Snow on top, none down below. We'll yep. take you down out of that. Yep. Um, then back to some water swamp games. Uh, swamps is another thing. Get in those alders and all that garbage, crawl through all that stuff and shoot out on the other side of some really deep, mucky water and stand there and wait. Yeah, the stuff you cannot go through quietly. Yes. Because you have to push alders out of the way and everything's wiggling and you can hear the pluck, pluck, pluck of your boots. Yeah. And they go, huh, here he is. Whew. And he's pretty tired. He's and been running a long ways and now he feels like parking and they'll park that. Happen, that. that happens a lot where you just keep hitting them and they just keep giving you another obstacle and then they you're going through it and then they whew, off again. One. Because they're never just going to be on a dead run forever. They don't want to just run and run and run and run and run and where are they going to go? right? It's, they keep going. Is he still coming? Is he, he is. All right. Is he still, that's what two step did. They're yep. still coming. Damn. Yeah. Go another way. Go again. There go they again. are again. Damn. Yeah. Right. And at some point they, it, if you've hit it five times and he keeps letting you hit him, keep going. Yes. He will probably get to a point where he will stop in a spot and all he has to do is make a mistake and be in the wrong, stop in the wrong spot. Or you end up going, I know what he's going to do. Because it gives you a chance to pattern them. After a couple jumps, you have a pattern. If yeah. they keep doing the same thing, you say, okay. He goes over a long stretch, goes up on top of this, J hooks and stands. You say, okay, here comes another rise. What am I going to do? Right? Maybe you're going to look for the J hook. If he keeps, if he's always on the right hand side of you, as you're up the track, you watch the right hand side or you veer off. And you try to hit him off the track. You get mm -hmm. off and you parallel his track. Because they'll watch their back track all the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. And they'll run with the wind. So the wind is at their back. All the and time. they're smelling their back trail. Yeah, there he is. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, don't get discouraged by that either. But what that does mean, though, 
when you're walking in the wind at your back and the deer's in front of you, if he's a jay hooker, you're probably okay. If he parks in the middle of his track, and and, and if it. <laughs> and, and and you're going real slow, he'll so, smell you before he sees you, and then he's gone. And you, right? you can't to see him when you're going with the wind. You can't track too slowly, which most of the time that is how they run. Yep, they want to be in a spot where they can hear, where they can smell, and where they can see you. And especially when he knows you're coming, he's yep. he's trying to detect you. Yep, and. There are a lot of times when the wind is switchy and like it's un- swirly. Un- yeah, like it's undependable. It and if he happens to change just general woods cover, the wind may be different over where he is. So mm-hmm. don't even worry about it. Like, don't yep. even worry if you're going with the wind and the deer's ahead of you. Don't, don't, you just have you to keep trucking and don't go too slow. It's so variable. The wind, just, we don't worry about wind too, too much ge- when you're generally tracking. When you're like circling a barnyard or doing something like that, then you want to be a little more conscious of the wind and you want the deer side of you to have the wind. If you but, can, but like most of the time it's so undependable, it doesn't matter. It if anything, blown. the wind direction only helps me establish my pace. If the wind is really screwy, I'm not going to wait around too no, long. You can't. I'm going to get in there because yeah, I'm polluting the area before I get to it. And I don't want to do that. So like, I'm going to take the chance and at least maybe get within sight. Right. And you've got to see the deer to shoot it. So like, I'm just going to take the chance of the movement and whatnot and just get in there. Cause if I wait too long, I'll never get a chance to get in sight because he yeah. smelt me and he's gone. Yeah. Right. So I, I don't even worry about it. I just keep trucking. And if it's really, the wind isn't good. How many times have you and I been together? And I said, oh, we got to go, right? The wind just, boom, right in right where he is. We, we can't, let's go, let's go, right? Mm-hmm. You just, you just got to work it the best you can. Yep. And it's the lightish wind that is really the problem. Mm-hmm. The real hard blowing stuff that really is tumbling and going through, that doesn't normally, that's not as bad because it breaks your scent up. It and even they, around. they get like one little, and they're like, well, where was that? At? Right, and they don't know. They're like, huh? <laughs> and they'll look around a little yeah, bit. Yeah, was that from over there? Or was it from over there? I can't tell. Even yeah. a deer won't know right mm-hmm. where it came Big, from. Big heavy wind is killer days because that doesn't typically happen to you as much late muddle muzzleloader season snow blowing off the trees really nice quiet walk in when the weather's changing and it's hammering wind ooh, don't ever miss one of those days go in the woods don't ever miss a really hard wind day when when a chance to track don't ever miss it that's how you shot yours mm-hmm. we had a crazy just really rough the woods are moving a little more mm-hmm. so you don't stand out when you're moving quite as much takes one of their or oh, two yeah. of their senses three of their senses away yep, yep. They, can't they can't smell hear. you can't quite hear you can't you know your your movement's a little more covered and you can get closer those mm-hmm. are the days we all we pray for those days mm-hmm. they're also a day when you tend to have i i have this tendency to want to go faster and because i think i'm covered yeah, you, and well, if anything, you, blue, go, you, you just, still got to pay go attention. Easy. And especially easy. once you busted him, right? When when I busted timber, I was like, oh, I got to be careful. Now, this is a deer that's really educated. We've educated him a lot, <laughs> right? Old. So, did as you, a, um, did you have you sent too thin to have him aged? No, I didn't. Uh, no, what, what would no. you? What were you guessing? Oh, he's five to seven years old. Yep. You know, right in that ballpark. Um, and and of course, he stopped and looked back five times, really hard, and for mm. a long time. And I never, I gave him that time and I, I never stopped tracking and I never I stopped didn't. making ground. Yeah. I made ground all the time, but I did it really slow and I looked it over good before I right. took another step. I like, don't, I don't really, I'm not a fan of the waiting. Like you bust him and let's wait. It's like, no, just go real slow, but keep making ground. Super slow. Keep making ground progress every time you move six inches in the woods you can see something you couldn't see before right. it, you don't have to you don't have to do a standard walking pace you can just take a step and stand yeah. there and then take a step and stand there because he might have hopped off and then started coming back and then is standing there and if you're still on your game don't stop and don't stop hunting T- clock is ticking clock is ticking especially at the end of the day yeah. When you're running out of yeah. daylight, you know, you might just, might Go just, get as well him. just, you, Go you've get got him. to meet him. If you don't meet him, you're not going to make it. Go get him. And there's been a whole bunch of times when they didn't go anywhere. Yeah, just like, hop off. Yeah, and, I thought they went a long two, three ways. Jumps. Yeah, they went three jumps and they were standing behind a spruce tree right there. And I pulled up and, huh, must be left. And went a little farther and, oh, <laughs> there's a tail right there. I can, I can, or I see jingle, jingle, 
right? And I look over and, oh, there's some white. Well, oh, there he is right there, right? Mm-hmm. So that that can happen fairly steady. And it did with Timber even, you know. I, the moose had jumped him. He ran up the hill. I get in the aisle. I look up and, oh, but that tree, right? That tree looks just like him. And I, I move a little more <laughs> and he's standing behind it. Oh, right mm-hmm. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? Eyeballs go, whoop. Yeah. And both of us, both yeah. our eyeballs went, <laughs> whoop, right? Right? So, you know, that's the, like, don't give up. Yeah. Um, but also know your limits, right? When yeah. when he goes across some giant, icy, boggy, terrible mess and you're not in shape for that and it's the end of the day and it's real cold out, yeah, Bye. you have to know when to bail, right? Yep. You gotta know when to bail. And when you when he's you've jumped him six times and he's really motoring and he hasn't let up and he's held a direction for a long, long time, you're gonna end up a long ways from the rig. Yep. Right. Maybe you're better off to hop in the rig and go back to it. Take the half hour, get back to the truck, hop in the truck and drive out ahead somewhere mm-hmm. and spend the last hour and a half in the direction he went hunting. Yep. Right. You know, just leave that track. He went across this giant swamp. That's a, just a nightmare of, you know, swamp grass and bog and you name it. And you, you got it. Nah, you're better off. Go back, get in the rig, drive around the whole thing and get on the other side. And if, if he's can, over in that, that section of woods, someplace to hunt that, you know, just yeah, for the last save hour yourself, and a half. Save yourself. Yeah. yeah. Cause like jumping them, we've shot a lot of deer that we've jumped. Oh yeah. A lot. Yeah. How many times we jump coyote, buck? four, four. Yeah. Four or five times. One, two, three, four, four, four times. Yep. And it's like, it's not over. Yep, it's you not just, over You just have over. to change your hunt a little tiny bit, but you have to pay attention. Yep. Jumping them sometimes is one of the best things you can do, and you're going to. You're going to jump them. It's going to happen. You're going to track deer. <laughs> you're going to bump them. You're going to jump them. You're going to slam them. You're going to freak some deer out, but that's like don't give up because you can still get them. We've done it a thousand times. Most of tracking, if you'd say, what do you think is the ratio to deer you shot on first impression, the first meet, and deer that you had it jumped at least once before you got him. What's the percentage? Mine is I've I've shot more deer on the meat, the first meat. Right. But that's mostly I'm on fifty fifty. You fifty yeah. fifty? First okay, time that's or good. the the second jump. The second jump I've killed a lot on the second jump. A lot, or just before the second jump, there right? You know. They've moved from the first spot to the second spot and I shoot them there. Yeah, I had a whole bunch of my because shot there, it, or they were leaving a second spot, and now I got a good view. And now you and know it's fresh. yes, it's coming. There he is, right there, and it's a running shot or a standing shot or mm-hmm. or a slowing down shot. Pow. Yep, they start going down to a walk. And they feel good, and then boom, you know, you just have or yeah. I holler at them, stop them somehow, you know, yep. grunt at them or something, and then bang. Yeah, been a whole bunch of that. Oh, or yeah. they left the second spot and came back towards me because I called to them. Mm-hmm. that is works so yep. good there's been a whole bunch of sometimes those. if you're if you're if it's early season calling and going real easy on a track that you know is fresh can bring them in like mm-hmm. grunt buck or whatever yep. but as you get into the season and as you get later into the season sometimes it might be more beneficial to reserve your calling and reserve some of your like more buck imitations till after you've hit them yeah kind of help kind of spike that curiosity and keep them a little longer so you have a little more time and then stay consistent and then every time you hit them look for a pattern look for when you hit them what the woods look like what kind of terrain you were in and what did they do what did they do on the track to when you hit them did they stop dead on their track did they do a j-hook did they go out and come back what what was their behavior were they pacing a lot were they standing there and like walking around and doing this in that one spot like they're nervous? You have Timber to notice, did. You have to notice those things. <laughs> yeah. You need to notice that. And that's going to help you get that deer. Just because you hit them, it's not over. Right. You know, the whole point of this is to give you guys some confidence. You know, if mm-hmm. don't, don't give up. You have to just go get them. And sometimes you're just in a bad spot and you're never going to you know, do anything about it. Yeah. We've, they're in, they they're always position themselves in the best spot they can. Always. High ground, thick stuff, space. They're either bedded down so they can see your legs coming and you can't see them. Like they, they pick good spots more often than not. And, and most of the time that's only when they're really getting pounded that day. Mm-hmm. Right. It isn't necessarily going to do that all the time. And, yeah. and 
and you know how much they're good for it. There's been a whole bunch of them that just completely forgot all about it and went back to their business and then just blundered right into them. And then and they blundered into me and yeah, well, yeah, that just that's yeah. the way it goes, yeah. right? So it just but the feeling of satisfaction that you got when you moved him a couple, three, four times and, and then, then you, you got him. him. Oh boy, now anybody he's can there. shoot a deer that doesn't know they're there. Oh yeah, it's a whole different game when you've bumped a deer a couple times and then you get him. Now you're talking. That's an accomplishment. <laughs> it is an accomplishment. That's completely different. Yep. Go get someone who knows you're coming. The turn and burn. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a trail of fire. You know, bears. When a oh. bear runs. And they freak. They leave a streak of fire 400 yards long, and they bust a long ways. Like, well, sometimes when the when there's a really high like crop for like acorns and all this sort of stuff, the bear and the weather isn't all that cold yet. The bears stay out late, and we bump into them sometimes. Those things leave us. Everyone is so freaked out about bears. Like anyone who's like not a hunter, if you go into the woods, and it's like, dude, bears, bears. <laughs> They free. You, me, and Jimmy are, are on a, a side mountain, uh, probably scattered over a mile and a half, yep. right? And Jimmy jumps a bear on the end, and it runs oh, yeah. by you, and then it runs by me, and right, we're all on the radio, and like, hey, just jumped a bear. It's coming towards in your direction on this giant side hill, right? Yep. You know, of like two miles by one mile, right? And the thing just goes whoa, right by you, and then a few minutes later, whoa, right by me, and like he still hadn't let up. Like, still, <laughs> like Jimmy scared him. I'm out of here. That's the cocoa puff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they don't mess good around. Stuff. Yeah, you know, <laughs> but. But yep. don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to go get a deer that you've jumped. He will make a mistake if you stick with him long enough. And you can always go back the next day. You can go back the next day. And he may develop a pattern where he runs in the same places over and over, and that'll kill him. And now you you'll know. learn it, and you'll learn it. Yep. You'll learn yeah. It. He'll show you the woods. He'll run by every scrape. He'll run by every doe group. He'll You're, run by other bucks. Absolutely. Like you won't. He'll teach you the entire woods. So just go ahead, give her some. Don't worry about it. Yep. You know, and you you never know. I don't know how many times I've I've been on one buck and he brought me to another buck. Yep. You know, bigger track or a different deer or whatever, a smaller deer. You oh know, yeah. Yeah, you get to see it all. So don't yep. be afraid. Give her a whirl and see what happens. Go get him. We got lots more podcasts coming. Uh, hopefully, you guys have learned a little bit. Hopefully, you've enjoyed this podcast. Um, uh, if you have any um, if you have any other questions like this, things that you're wondering about, you know, either tracking techniques, what to do in the woods, things we use. Maybe we can share some more stories later on and uh, help you guys uh, go get that big buck of your dreams, help you have a better deer season. Um, We're really excited. We got uh, seven days and we're out of here. So we're pretty excited. Seven more days and our our deer season officially starts. But uh, thank you guys so much for listening, tuning in to the podcast. We're looking for the Iron Giant. Yeah. We're looking for uh, Two-Step. We like to see him again. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking, tour guide, tour guide, definitely. We got a couple. We the got old a couple. Man, I'd like to see if the old man's still <laughs> kicking. He probably isn't, he's, but you never know. Teeth are falling out. Probably he's a hundred. <laughs> if he's alive, he's a hundred. <laughs> we'll go see but some buck. This is going to be a great deer season, and uh, we really appreciate everybody tuning in. And until next time, see you later. Good luck, guys. Happy hunting.